Alrighty, bang. Bit of wood shock. There we go, right in your face. We've seen it. What just happened? I mean, like, more ways than one. What just, what just happened? What happened with the, what, what, I, let, let's, let's talk about the movie. What did you do? So, Woodshock is directed by Kate and Laura Malevi, and it stars Kirsten Dunst. And now, Kate and Laura are actually um, costume designers. They won, or I believe they were nominated for an Oscar on Black Swan. And they've also Ooh, developed... I know that. Yeah, they've also developed their own fashion company, Road Art. And from there, they've gone on to make a couple of short films along the way, and now they've finally made their first feature, also produced by Kirsten Dunst. And this film is kind of a mind trip. We follow Kirsten Dunst's character as she's going through a traumatic event, and she's also mixing with the use of of marijuana through the 70s, I well, let's believe. Let's just say, that's not just the use, the heavy use. There's the a heavy, heavy use. There's a lot of, it's it's the 70s gone, you know, it, it, bleh, bleh. What we want to start with talking about this movie is that it's like a really uh, difficult one to kind of like, obviously we try to be a bit more objective when we talk about reviews, we try to break down, you know, a film, uh, you know, what works, what doesn't, uh, what actually uh, was done to construct a story that works. This is a really hard one to kind of put your finger on because it it's is. so kind of abstract and wild. Um, obviously that first trailer was phenomenal and I'm actually genuinely surprised with how similar the film was in kind of style, uh, tone and pacing to the trailer. Obviously it's kind of, uh, you slow it down a bit more but it is just as crazy. Well as I mean just it. to begin with when we start watching this film those beautiful fades that we saw in the trailer and like the, the double the exposures, double opacity, double exposure that we're seeing, it's it's in the film and yeah. it is absolutely wonderful. I mean kind of like the, the floating camera, the handheld stuff and just these beautiful locations, it's all there. And it, it creates for a little indie that... I've never ever seen a film quite like... Well, I mean, I've seen films similar to this, but I've never seen anything quite like this. It does feel really like unique. This. It does feel really special. 100%. And I think most of that comes down to the way the story, I guess, is kind of conveyed visually. I, I, I'd i say it's more... um, It's it's visual kind of stylings are more leaning towards uh, that kind of thing where you're reflecting characters' inner selves. The film uh, really, really does a fantastic job of that kind of getting us into the headspace of the characters as they change kind of state. The kind of all the characters in this film do go through a kind of flow where they, we find them in different headspaces of surrounding different events, different feelings, different emotions. And the film does a fantastic job of capturing that. It also does an incredible job of capturing the environment. There are some really great landscape shots here, and not just landscape, just the little details in environments, uh, and even just in buildings, like finding the spaces in a room with two characters having a conversation, finding that angle that really conveys as much information as it can uh, with the minimal amount of cutting. Just kind of working with that, letting us know uh, as they move around the space what is going on with them inside their head. And now performances here are actually really, really good. Both Kirsten Dunst and Plu as Beak, who plays Euron Greyjoy from Grey Game of Thrones. That's how that's pronounced, it's but... not how it's pronounced at all, but like he deserves to be recognised because his performance here is really, really good. I mean, we kind of, we've known him from Game of Thrones as being this hardcore, angry sort of dude, but he shows a lot of emotion here and quite a fair bit of range. And Kirsten Dunst, she's absolutely fantastic. She's she killing is, it at the moment, she's hey? She's such an amazing actress and she's working in so many different areas with so many different directors and here again she gives such a raw performance, so open, so honest and so so it's, just, it's really brave as well I think. Like There's a lot that's kind of asked of her here, not only emotionally but I guess kind of uh, it, it is one of those kind of heavy-handed indies, I guess, where there's obviously we've seen this film's like really aesthetically crazy, uh, but it's really kind of uh, a, a damaged person that she's playing, and she does handle it with a lot of skill and grace. And again, as we, we want to keep going back to uh, the actual direction of this film, really supports every actor involved. There's a couple of other actors here, um, just smaller roles who all do kind of great work with what they're given. Uh, the soundtrack as well here is uh, is one of the absolute highlights, especially towards the end of the film. It just really starts to kind of pick up and, and uh, it leads to an actual ending, like let's say like the final 10, 15 minutes, which is mm. actually genuinely remarkable. Like I think no matter how you kind of lean with this film, uh, how you kind of feel about it, I feel like that ending still packs a lot of punch for anyone who watches it. For sure, and it's, it's so bold. Like, it's ambitious, it, You hey? know, the fact that like Kate and Laura Malevi have come out and made this film, like it, it's so goddamn bold because because they're going to get a lot of flack, I think. A lot of people are going to go, oh, no, it's crap, or no, it's this, or, oh, no, I didn't like that, but, you know, the rest was okay. Like, th there is a lot to get from this film, and I, I am so excited to rewatch it, because I know, oh, sure. I know that I missed out on so much, because this film covers so much ground, and, you know, all of a sudden, you're just, you're confronted with something There's brand new, and you don't know how to feel yeah. about it. So, you know, like, there is a lot packed into this little indie, and it just makes for just one spectacular film experience, and... Uh, 
I love that. It's so goddamn inspiring, especially to watch like these two female directors come out and kill it the way they have. And I think that really is the thing that we're saying there with, I, I think this is a hard film to, to mark objectively. It's just going to be things that I think certain people are going to be like, hey, I wanted more of that, but I don't know whether wanting more of that would have actually made it a better film or not. Um, I kind of found that for me personally, there's like a bit more I could have dug into um, actually kind of connecting with the characters, I felt like a little bit distanced, which which does tend to happen with films that kind of have um, a massive stylistic flair in the same way that kind of recent Malick efforts have kind of found people, people like, I don't know whether I really attached to that or not. I think it could have been pushed a little bit further in that regard, but for me, I'm kind of just happy with what I got. I don't feel like it was ever the kind of film I was gonna go like, I need this to be perfect, I need it to be absolutely flawless, I need it to be everything I want it to be. It was just a film where I was like, this seems really bold, I just wanna see it, so that's why it works for me. You've really gotta be open to this experience, yeah. and you've gotta walk in knowing that like, you're, you're going into a film experience rather than a film with like a, a flat linear story so you really do have to open your mind and you have to see and you have to listen and just sit back in your chair and watch an artist at work I yeah. mean it's kind I, of an I, adventure you just got to kind of take the risk you to take the dive you to jump in and see what the film gives you as opposed to like wanting a certain thing from the movie and I suppose that brings us to scoring the film and I mean like when you get a film like this it really makes us question like is scoring films really even worth it anymore it's so like people then compare scores they're like you give this a score and they're like oh and then you gave that a same score score but you said different stuff about it I'm like yeah because you got to quantify them differently and you give a score now but I guarantee in two weeks time I want to rewatch this film it's going to change like, ah, ah, and yeah. it's the same with films we've seen this year we already feel differently about them but anyway we better chuck a score on this and, and I'm going to give Woodshock an 8.5 I'm going to give this one an 8 and a, you know that could float either way it's just a kind of way of saying hey it's, it's, it's good it's great I recommend it go check it out I don't really know exactly where it sits because there's so much going on in it so that was our review of Woodshock straight out of the 2017 Venice Film Festival we'd ask if you'd seen it yet but you probably haven't so let us know your thoughts in the comment section below whether you are going to see it or not and while you're down there's probably worth hitting our subscribe button to see more stuff from us and don't forget to check us out on facebook instagram snapchat and twitter while we're here at the venice film festival